Today, we're talking about trailhead safety with Sergeant Ryan Abbott from the King County Sheriff's Office. And thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate your time. Yeah, of course. Glad to be here. So the target for this is beginning mountain bikers, people that, you know, maybe have never done this before or maybe just getting back into it. And they're going out and exploring, finding new trails. And, uh, you know, we're talking right now specifically about King County, Washington. Um, but I think a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about applies to many trailheads. And we're talking specifically about trailheads and not the full trail system. So not search and rescue and all that sort of stuff, but more so just like parking your car at the lot and, and kind of etiquette and, and things to be aware of there. So, you know, not all trailheads are part of, uh, you know, a King County park or King County property. Um, but, you know, some of them are definitely patrolled by that. So it's also to be aware, good to be aware that there's uh, different jurisdictions. So specifically a couple that I, I know that are uh, patrolled by King County officers are Duthie and Tiger Mountain. So let's say I'm a beginning mountain biker and I'm going to go out, I'm going to explore one of those places. What are some things I should know or think about when I get to the trailhead, when I get to the parking lot? Well, that's a great question. Um, you know, as I think you know, and I'm sure all your viewers know how busy it's been at all the trailheads, everybody's trying to get out. And I mean, to be honest, you can't even buy a bike right now. I tried, trust me. Um, but what I can tell you is once you get to the trailheads, the criminals also know that there are record numbers of people that are showing up at the different uh, parks and spending time there. And the main thing that they know is when somebody is going out to either hike or go on a mountain bike, they're not going to be back in five minutes. They're going to be gone for quite some time. Um, so be really aware of where you're at, where you park. If you ever see somebody that's sitting in their car, it uh, doesn't look like they're ready to go on a hike or mountain bike. And they, they kind of, a lot of times they'll actually lean their seat back and they'll just kind of be hanging out, not taking a nap, but just looking around and surveying the area. Those are people to be suspicious of and something to watch. Um, because more times than not, there's, they're already, the suspects are usually already in the parking lot most of the time and they're waiting. And some of the things they're waiting for is they're waiting to see, are you going to take your wallet out of your pocket and open your trunk and put it in your trunk to try to hide it? Uh, are you going to put it underneath your seat? This is all things that they're paying attention to and making note of because once you leave with your bike, they know you're not going to be back for at least an hour, maybe longer. And that just buys them enough time that they can break a window, get into your trunk, steal your uh, wallet. And then what they do most of the time is they'll go directly to stores and they'll start using your cards at as many, as, at as many stores as they can prior to you coming back and realizing, oh no, my wallet's been stolen. I need to call somebody so I can report it. By that time, it's been used multiple times. Um, so that's just one of, one of the tips that I would really suggest is if you're going to bring your wallet with you, or if or a purse with you or whatever and you have it in your car and your intent is to hide it once you get to the trailhead do that well before you get there you can go to Safeway or just anywhere pull off a neighborhood put your wallet or whatever it is that's valuable of course we never want to leave it in view plain view because they're gonna look through the window that's one of the first things they do put it into your trunk well before going in there or hide it under your seat or wherever you're gonna put it and then go to the trailhead so then the people think the suspects that are watching well, I can't see anything inside. I didn't see him hide anything. So they must've not brought it with them or they just brought a couple of cards with them, which is another great option. Any other tips on what to look for as far as what suspicious activity looks like? Yeah. I mean, you can usually get that. We always say, you know, if you get that weird feeling, everybody says, well, how do I know what the weird feeling is? Like I said, if, if you're at a trailhead and everybody's hiking, everybody's biking and you have somebody that's dressed like fully dressed they don't look like they belong they don't look like they have any interest in going anywhere um, usually what we'll see is a car will drive into the trailhead they'll be surveilling the area trying to determine who's going to be their victim uh, whose property they're going to steal they'll walk through if you see them walk you see somebody walking through looking in cars windows but they don't seem to be going into the car that's usually a hint that something's not right and um, they'll usually pull in right next to the car they're going to break into if they can. A lot of times they'll back in because they want to be able to get out of there quickly and they don't want anybody to see them. So the quicker they can get out of there, the better it's going to be. Um, and then don't hesitate to call 911. If you see somebody suspicious, call us. We would rather come out there and determine it's nothing than come out and take a, a theft report on, I think I responded to four or five cars broken into in the same parking lot and at one time because they'll go from car to car to car to car, break in, steal a bunch of items, then take off 
hoping that nobody saw them. Nothing of value should ever be left in your car when you go anywhere, but especially a trailhead where you're going to leave it parked for some time. Because like I said, they're always going to be looking through the windows and they're going to be looking for valuables. Um, if you can keep do the same thing with your phone, you would your wallet. If you can hide it before you go into the trailhead, that's your best option. Make sure that the ringer is not on. Something as simple as that because... A lot of times these suspects will walk from car to car list, looking in the windows. Well, if they hear a phone ringing, they know there's a phone in there. So they want to get the phone. So they're going to try to figure out a way to get in there and try to find that phone. Never leave anything in the sight that you can see outside of the car into the car. I hear some people just go ahead and leave their doors unlocked. What's your philosophy on that? We, you know, we hear people say that too. And, it, and people say, well, the reason is I'd rather have them go in my car and find nothing than, than break the window and then I have to buy a new window. That's one way you can look at it. Um, I don't ever leave my car's doors unlocked personally, but if you have absolutely nothing of value in your car, there's still a possibility they could steal your car. So um, we say any additional deterrent that you can use, meaning locking your doors, if you have a club that you can put on the steering wheel or a brake lock, or sometimes they have emergency cutoffs or gas cutoffs or things like that. Um, most of the time at the trailheads, they're not after stealing the car. They're after the items that are in the car. But we still see it here and there where they will steal the entire car. Let's say, you know, I return to my vehicle. I discover it's been broken into. What should I do? We really want to make sure that people are aware and we want people to call 911. If it happens in a King County jurisdiction, meaning King County Parks or the King County Sheriff's Office covers it, or one of our many contract cities, you can also report online. Um, report to sheriff.org. That's a one word, report to sheriff.org. Um, you can file an online report if you want to do it that way. You can also call and they might say, hey, if you don't have any suspect information, like you didn't see anything, you still need to make a report. And the reason that's so important is we don't ever know what happens at trailheads unless things are reported. So we might think, gosh, things are going so great this summer. We've only had four break-ins. We're in reality there's been 50 people's car that have been broken into, but most of those people haven't called 911. So it's important to remember that if you are a victim of a crime, whatever that crime might be, and if you're at a trailhead and your car's broken into, call 911. They'll patch you over to the non-emergency line. They'll either take a report over the phone or they'll offer you to go online and do it once you get home. It doesn't have to be done right that second, but it's also important because if they get your wallet and your credit cards, the first thing they're going to do is go out and go shopping. It's up to each other to be watching out for suspicious behavior, suspicious activity, or just anything that doesn't seem right. Or if you see somebody's car that was just broken into, call 911 and have the police respond because there's a possibility if they broke into one car, they're probably nearby still and they're just waiting to get into the next car. I think a lot of people feel like, I don't, I'm not going to file a report because I want to take up the police time because I don't want to do this. I know like in the city of Seattle, they've actually said, no, we want that report, even if we might not be able to take action on it, because no. we can reallocate resources based on that. Is King County similar that well, up, you guys, if you get a lot of reports, will you increase patrols, that sort of thing? Exactly. And, you know, King County Parks is one of our new contracts, and they actually employ deputies that work for them just for the parks. And when they start to see an increase in lo one location over the other on maybe a break-in of cars, they will, not only will they shift deputies over there, but they'll pay overtime to have deputies out there patrolling the area, patrolling the parking lots to make them, make sure people know that they feel safe. We want them to feel safe. We want them to have a fun time. Um, but without those numbers and without knowing about it, we would have no idea. And, and that would tell everybody, hey, everything's great. There's no reason to get any extra deputies out here on patrol anywhere because everything looks to be fine. We only got two reports. Where in reality, most people are just afraid to call. Call us, please. We'd rather you call, make a report. It just takes a couple of minutes and it's in the system and we know what happened. Shifting gears a bit, some of the parking lots, uh, I know they, they have signs that say open dust till dawn and there's a gate and that sort of stuff. Uh, are those signs real? Do they actually close the gates? Do they open the gates or how does that work? Uh, deputies are assigned to go out and close the gates at night. They'll usually out there, it says dust to dawn. We usually don't get out there until I would say nine or 10 o'clock at night, um, but that can vary. But yes, we close them every night and the parks is responsible for opening them every morning. And the main reason we have those, and those are just the ones that you see the gates on it. And the main reason we have them is so to deter or to stop any criminal activity from happening in those parking lots overnight. Uh, they don't want people camping. They don't want people starting random fires or um, doing drugs or whatever else might happen 
So if they just close the gates, it's closed. If we find somebody in there, it's trespassing. We'll contact them, see what they're doing, and then we'll have them move on their way. What if somebody gets their car locked in that gate? What do they need to do? Yeah, good question. You can call 911. They will send you over to non-emergency, and they'll dispatch out a deputy to open the gate for you because we'll have keys. So we can we can get those gates opened again. We would much rather have you call because we have seen it in the past where people will try to ram the gates and heavily damage them, heavily damage their car, and all they had to do was call them. We'll come let them out. And people are enjoying the parks and people are enjoying and sometimes they are out a little bit longer than what they thought. And by the time they get back, if we see a car in the parking lot, we're already going to be a little suspicious of it. And we're going to run the plate and make sure that there isn't somebody that got hurt that's hanging out there. We're going to try to do our, our due diligence to try to look into it. But if we can't find anything suspicious, we might just lock the gate thinking, okay, maybe they went with a friend. They're going to come back tomorrow and pick up their car, which happens a lot as well. So, um, just call. Don't hesitate to call 911. They will put you over to non-emergency as soon as you call. There's a non-emergency line, but it's a lot to remember. So if you just call 911 and say, hey, this is not an emergency. Can you put me over to non-emergency? They'll transfer you to another call receiver, and then you can tell them what's going on, and they'll send somebody out there. Is there a fine or anything for having to call after hours? No. Nope. No fine. They're just, we're the police. We're here to help, so please call. We'd rather come out and, like I said, get you out of there. Sometimes it might take us a little while, unfortunately, uh, because we a lot of times have priority calls that take precedence over anything else. So as soon as we get out of those calls, we, the first thing we'll do is come over and get you out of there. Yeah, I could definitely see how it's a, a lower priority than many of the other things on your right. list. Any other tips or suggestions you'd like to share? Um, you know, overall, I think just the main thing is we want people to have a great time. We want people to be safe. We want people to enjoy the parks just like everybody else, anybody um, that's able to get there. And uh, if you've got a new bike or a bike and you're going to these great trails, please have a great time. Be safe. Uh, just take those extra few precautions prior to going out so that your car, you don't come back and your car is broken into and all of your belongings are missing because that can be turn such a great day into such a frustrating day. If something happens, again, please call. Please make a report so that we're aware of what happened so that we can make sure we're getting additional deputies out to those parks to patrol them in hopes to catch these people in the act. Thanks for joining us today, and thanks for the ongoing service from the King County Sheriff's Office. Really appreciate it. Yes, of course. Thanks again, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.